Stop, 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 stop. Before we get started this morning, we have a brief but very important announcement for our YouTube viewers out there. Um, I want you to know that this we started this week, this past Monday, with an unexpected, unexpected loss of internet service here at uh, the Casa. No internet, no telephone. So we were forced to rely on on our Telcel account, which has limited bandwidth. As such, we did not upload coffee and headlines on schedule on Monday and yesterday, and, and Monday and Tuesday and yesterday, service was reestablished. So I want to apologize to our YouTube viewers. You are very important to us, even though you don't watch live. And um, hopefully next time this happens, we'll be better prepared, but in the meantime, I appreciate the fact that you're with us, even if you choose not to be with us live through Facebook. So <clears throat> now that I've sent you some love, let us roll those credits. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook and also on YouTube later on during the day, where we examine headlines from our city, Puerto Vallarta, our state, Jalisco, and our country, Mexico, and we look for all kinds of information, comments, ideas, topics, suggestions from you so that we can all have an amazing life here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals, and yes... We have internet. Here I was thinking that I would be enduring telmexecution, but they followed through literally yesterday I, we, as we finished our botched, um, our botched broadcast of yesterday. I turned around and looked at the modem, which is back there, and the lights were blinking. <laughs> Thank you, Telmex. And now let's take a look at what we're going to look at. Um, at we're going to look at today. We're going to have some local political news, some information about water pressure issues. We have some weather information and some information about organ donors and uh, some laws that are changing in the state of Jalisco. We have a good reason to visit La Isla tomorrow and um, more information about In the Heights and all the controversy that is surrounding this new film by Lin-Manuel Miranda. So let's jump into the news. We'll come back for our chit-chat section in the during the end of the broadcast. And of course, if you're new here, please let us know by writing the word new in your comment. And please add the letter Q if you have something really important that you want us to focus on during the broadcast. Let's get going. Now that we know that Puerto Vallarta Mayor Arturo Davalos lost his bid to become the local deputy, some may be wondering if he'll come back to finish his term, which actually concludes on September 30th. Well, the answer is no, since his party, Movimiento Ciudadano, lost in town. As such, interim mayor um, Jorge Antonio Quintero will continue to oversee the current administration, which is, of course, now concerned with the transition to the new one, which will be led by elected mayor uh, Luis Alberto Michel Rodriguez of the Morena Party. Again, he will be beginning his term at the beginning of October. October? 
Yes, yes, at the beginning of October. Moving on, um, there is a new law in the works here in the state of Jalisco making organ donation mandatory unless you've specifically indicated otherwise in writing. This may not seem important, but some folks out there may simply not want their loved one's organs donated once death is confirmed. And this, of course, is the kind of thing one tends to not even think about in advance. So if not donating your organs is important to you, I think it is important that you get it in writing. Um, Seapal continues their race against the summer rains with improvements all over the city, now announcing low water pressure in a number of neighborhoods, and here's a complete list. It includes Cinco de Diciembre, Agua Azul, Barrio Santa Maria, Bugambilia, Centro, El Cerro, Gastronómicos, Herradura, La Pedrera, La Vena, Lázaro Cárdenas, López Mateos, and Olímpica. And this will go on today. So you may have a little bit of water shortage, <clears throat> or your water pressure may be low in these uh, neighborhoods that we mentioned. This is, of course, to improve our water service in town. Mexico's health secretary has announced vaccination for adults between the ages of 18 and 39, but only in border towns. This has been decided in order to facilitate the return to, to a healthy commercial activity with the United States and it is made possible thanks to uh, 350,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine that were donated by the United States government. So if you have any friends or loved ones that are living in border towns, you can now go into the usual um, website where you can pre-register for your vaccine and actually get pre-registered if you are in a border town. For the rest of us, we continue to wait for the next indications that we will be able to um, get our next vaccination sometime soon. And now let us switch over to the weather and see, oh my God, what's going on with this heat? <laughs> well, now we know why Batman has so much trouble keeping a girlfriend no comment. It is 28 degrees right now. Feels like 33. Humidity is a high 87 percent. Our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 82. And there is presently a 7 percent chance of rain. But we also learn that uh, the weather forecast for today includes rain this morning and overnight with a high temperature of 31, low temperature of 25. Tomorrow Friday, it will rain until morning, starting again in the evening with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 24. And Saturday, it's going to be a rainy day and it'll be humid with a high temperature of 30 and a low temperature of 24. Uh, we can only hope for better weather. Was it, hot, was it hot enough for you last night? I had to set up my ceiling fan in Mondo Turbo mode <laughs> to stop schwitzing in bed. The good news is that a low pressure zone is um, is brewing in the Pacific and it has increased the chances of a major storm within the next 48 hours. The latest announcement from the National Hurricane Warning Center indicates a 70% chance of a tropical cyclone within the next 48 hours and this possibility will increase to 90% within the next five days. A special bulletin for the states of Nayarit, Jalisco, Colima, Michoacán, and Guerrero is expected to be issued sometime today. Needless to say, if we catch this bulletin, we will um, share it on our Coffee and Headlines Facebook page. Now, let's talk about Pueblos Magicos or Magical Towns. Uh, there are 2,469 municipalities in all of Mexico and of all of those, 132 are denominated uh, or designated rather as Pueblo Magico for meeting a criteria that has to do with preserving tradition, architecture, history, and so forth. San Sebastián del Oeste near Puerto Vallarta, for example, is one of such Pueblos Magicos. 
So if you're wondering which ones are the most popular ones, this article mentions the five most searched Pueblos Mágicos on Google in case you want to add some of these to your bucket list. And if you're starting to feel like traveling, the top one in the search uh, engine is Mazamitla in Jalisco, followed by Huasca de Ocampo in Hidalgo, Mineral del Chico, also in the state of Hidalgo, Tlayacapan in the state of Morelos, and Tlacotalpan in Veracruz. So all of these, except for the first one, are located in other states. So I'm going to show you, just for the sake of it, uh, where Mazamitla is located on the map in case we want to go to Mazamitla at some point. I haven't been there, but it's definitely on my bucket list. So if we look at the map, here is good old Puerto Vallarta in the map. And there goes the highway that goes, this is the fast highway that goes to Guadalajara. And here is the San Sebastián del Oeste Highway, the slow one, but scenic one. And there's Guadalajara. And Mazamitla, here's Lago de Chapala, in case you're wondering where all our friends from Ajijic live. And Mazamitla is down here, under Lake Chapala. So it's not like it's the easiest place to get to, and maybe that is why the town is able to remain um, a Pueblo Magico or a magical town. So in case you're thinking of a place you may want to go visit, um, that's where Mazamitla is. I have seen and there's a ton of documentaries and footage on YouTube about this beautiful town and all the other beautiful towns. And as traveling continues to open up in our country, I'm getting antsy. But for now, I continue with my usual uh, speech. I want to go to Guadalajara. I want to go to Mazatlán. So somebody please take me there. But not by bicycle, of course. Local cyclists have announced a bike ride to take place on Father's Day, that would be this coming Sunday, with a hope to raise awareness of the importance of better traffic signaling along bike paths in town. The local cyclist community has hopes that the upcoming new administration will continue to not only take the community into account, but also continue to improve its support. We see more and more people riding bicycles around the city. We see more and more bicycle paths. But are we getting smarter and smarter and kinder with bicyclists? Probably not as much as we'd like. Um, I know from friends that other parts, other projects in town are waiting with lots of expectation to see what kind of changes will take place in uh, in the local offices of government like the arts community the department of culture and so forth and so on but as usual we will have to wait and see what happens once the new administration takes over uh, moving right along, I have three other little things that I want to share with you. Uh, for starters, La Isla Shopping Center has announced a free for performance of the Vallarta Azteca Folkloric Ballet to take place tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the shopping center. So if you're comfortable being out and about and are in the mood of some shopping, this is something you may want to consider, a free performance of the Folkloric Ballet. Um, or if you feel like going to the movies, In the Heights is in town. The new musical film by Lin-Manuel Miranda is now uh, in our theaters along with uh, Cruella. In the Heights in Spanish is called En el Barrio, which means in the neighborhood. As we know, sometimes the, the, the way the names are translated is... Um, for movies is it's 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 interesting wordplay and we haven't done one of those lists in a while but i remember when when we the last time we did one of those lists or one movie that always comes to mind when i think about goofy translations is the movie ghost i'm sure you remember ghost uh was it that yes ghost with um with what's his face and what's her face. In Spanish, it was called, they couldn't call it fantasma, which means ghost, because that would have been too creepy. So I think they called it the specter of love or something like that. So it is quite common in movie theaters here in Mexico, and I'm sure in other parts of Latin America, that the names of movies sometimes get changed so that they remain appealing, even if uh, the name has little or next to little to do with the original film. And, of course, speaking of In the Heights, there has been a fair amount of eyebrow raising along the Black Latinx 
um, uh, Latinx community of Washington Heights for their lack of presence in the film. And if you want to learn more about this, thank you. Yes, Whoopi and Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. I love it when you fill my sentences. Thank you very much. Um, so if you want to get a better grip as to why some people are not happy with this film, um, like any film is ever going to make everybody happy. Hello. Here is a wonderful explainer article from Vox that I'm going to leave for you in the show notes. It is, of course, in English. And this, my friends, brings us to the end of our news. So let us rewind our comment tape and see who's here and see who's happy. And I hope everybody's happy. If you're not happy, let us know. Say, I'm not happy and we'll find a way to make you happy this morning. I think the kazoo is somewhere here, if necessary. We'll do a kazoo something. Raymond is still in Guadalajara, but it's great to see you. Albert reports a hot Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles. Um, let's see what else we have here. Congrats on the restored internet. You know, you never seem to realize how much you miss something. You know, I had been I had been looking after my megas and I was getting ready for plan B, either going to one of those co-work uh, facilities in town to upload some of the YouTube stuff. I was also thinking of increasing my bandwidth with Telcel, but lo and behold, we don't need to worry about this anymore. Um, Kresh is leaving us in nine days back to Texas. Ooh, it's going to be hot up there. Safe travels. Uh, glad all is well, not executed. Not this time, Betsy, but you know we all get executed at one point or another. And if you need a reminder of what a execution is, just write execution in your in your comments, and we will be glad to go over that. Na 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 na. na. <clears throat> Let's see what else. Let's see what else. Christine needs to come to PVR, to Puerto Vallarta. I just put on a sweater here in San Miguel de Allende. It's gray and cool. Trust me, gray and cool might be better than hot and humid these days. Um, I'm sure plenty of us would volunteer for a house swap right now. Absolutely, absolutely. I never, you know, I my friends so kindly tell me, you know, if you want to stay at our place, we're air conditioned, so forth and so on. And I never say yes, but there are some nights. And last night was one of those nights in which I said to myself, oh, my goodness, how are we going to do this? Um, Brett, you push my buttons in a good way. We haven't talked about Copper Canyon in a while, but Copper Canyon continues to be in an important place in my bucket list, uh, maybe right next to Guadalajara in Mazatlán. We've talked to to friends of ours here in town that have done Copper Canyon and I've never done it and it continues to be one of my big, big wishes to do Copper Canyon. Uh, so you are very fortunate to have it near you because you are in Mazatlan. Hopefully we'll be able to do this at some point. Um, Dave reports on Mazamitla. Nice, not overwhelmingly so. I like Sebast uh, San Sebastian and Talpa de Allende a bunch more. But for a place to cool down, Masamitla is great up in the mountain. I've heard that it gets nice and cool over there. Um, Janice made it live again. Mazel tov. Um, the Heights is similar to a barrio as it's a neighborhood. Uh, in the Heights was awesome. Saw it yesterday in the cinema, but also saw it live on Broadway in New York City. How fortunate is that? That is wonderful. Uh, let's see. Yes, La Sombra del Amor, The Shadow of Love. See, every now and then, Matthew, I go looking at, at funny movie name translations, and I always I always get a kick out of some of those. Uh, let's see. David will be happier when he arrives in 48 days. Jorge is always happy. This is good to know. Um, let's see. Pat is quite content listening and looking at the Mar de Cortes. How wonderful is that? In Puerto Peñasco, Sonora, to be precise. I love it. Jorge wants to do Copper Canyon as well. Um, and Brett makes specific recommendations. You know, I have a whole research thing because one of the things that is very clear to me uh, about Copper Canyon, Brett, is that I don't want to do it as a tour. 
I want to do my own research and figure out what are the attractions in each one of these Pueblos Magicos and make up my own schedule. And it is very nice that uh, one can actually choose to stay as many days as, as anybody wants. But I thank you very much for your suggestion of staying at Divisadero for a few days. I've heard that before, and I get excited just thinking about it. Uh, <clears throat> Michal is looking forward to In the Heights at the movies. You know, so am I. I think it's also available on one of the uh, streaming services. But again, these big musical productions, I always enjoy watching them on the big screen. And I'm truly hoping that is going to be the case. So hopefully I'll be able to schedule a movie outing with my friends sometime today or maybe tomorrow. Sometime during the weekend would be lovely. Um, let's see what else. Well, oh my goodness, we've dashed through this broadcast a lot faster than I thought we would. We had a lot of segments that I wanted to share with you today, but as long as we still have a little bit of time, what is going to happen in the next few days here at Coffee and Headlines? Well, you know, now that we have our internet restored, it is a good reminder of the fact that while we've been walking on a regular basis, we have not been uploading the individual walks to the website. So I'm planning on doing a fair amount of that between now and the end of the week so that if you want to go and find all the places that we've walked, you don't have to scroll through each one of the episodes. Um, in fact, we're going to create a special segment on the on the website so that you can find them easily. Um, we're always looking for ways to make sure that the information we provide is easily accessible to you. So when you browse the website, um, if you find any areas where you think we could improve um, the ability for you to connect with the information that you're looking for, we always appreciate the fact that you let us know uh, your comments and suggestions. Um, <laughs> Matthew wonders if anyone is interested in buying some of those Loteria Nacional tickets for ex-narco apartments in Acapulco and other places. Let me add a little bit of context. Every now and then, the government of Mexico decides to raffle obnoxious and weird things that we've accumulated through past presidential periods like a whole fucking plane. So now, now uh, our president, uh, Andres Manuel López Obrador, has added to the list of things that are going to be raffled uh, in the national lottery system. They've added a, a bunch of residences that were narco owned. They've added a special, uh, how do you say palco in English? Oh my God. Uh, Alexa, ¿cómo se dice palco en inglés? Not barco, I said palco. Anyhow, one of those special balconies at the Azteca Stadium, one of those VIP balconies is also being raffled. Um, Matthew, I don't know that a lot of people buy lottery tickets down here. I was tempted to get one for the national plane just to save it as a souvenir, but I, I never, I never watched it. Uh, Troy now cannot wait for the release of Dear Evan Hansen. I've heard it's going to be really wonderful. Um, Brett would take an apartment in Acapulco. It's beautiful there. I haven't been to Acapulco since I was in my single digits, so I couldn't tell you. Michael, no worries that you're late. It is always great to see you. But indeed, we are on our way out. This was our first more relaxed coffee and headlines since we got semi telmexecuted, but it is so nice that a box at a sports arena. Thank you very much, Karen. That's exactly what I was thinking, a balcony suite. Um, in Spanish, they're called palco, P-A-L-C-O. And um, and my happy uh, Amazon friend thought that I was referring to a barco, not a palco. So either I need to improve my, addic my, my diction, not my addiction, my diction, or, or I, I need to have a conversation with my my Amazon gal. But I'll do that after we get done here. So as usual, thank you so very much um, for your understanding when things go wonky and things went a little crazy this earlier part of the week. But we're back to our normal way of broadcasting and we're happy to be doing this. We're happy that you support us. We're happy that you enjoy the broadcast. So between now and the next time we get together, stay happy, stay kind, Go to the movies, go out, stretch your comfort level as to the extent that you feel comfortable doing so, but stay, stay safe, keep your loved ones safe, continue to follow the guidelines, and stay in touch. Have a great day.